It's like, okay, it's working. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey, and I'm here with Zenron. Hello, hello. What's Shonen Archive? Shonen Archive is a show in which... Ah, uh, fuck me. Uh, sorry, I only <laughs> I did not get much sleep. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen will be watching all Shonen Jump anime throughout time and history that is available to us in English. Uh, starting with Gintama, finishing Chainsaw Man, hopefully finishing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and then starting some new stuff coming up. Uh, Zen, are you ready? But today we're only talking about two episodes of Gintama, because like I said, um... You have limited time, and I was working like fucking crazy last night, so I had to get some extra sleep. I did not go to bed till sometime after 8 a.m. Jesus. Yeah, r rough times, but hey, at least now we get to sit back and relax and talk about some Gintama. Keeping up with the schedule of we cannot go multiple weeks without seeing new episodes of Gintama, so at least two episodes this time. Episode 91 and episode 92. Are you ready to talk about them, Zen? I am. Let's get into it. Episode 91. If you want to lose weight, then stop eating and start moving <laughs> is the name of episode 91. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. We're back to the fat jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2008. They're not. They're never too far away. No, but thankfully there's no uh, good Toki in this episode. So there's no, <laughs> no character going, hey, fatty, how you doing? <laughs> you want... <laughs> want a burger fat he need to move there's none of that thankfully <laughs> uh go ahead and tell us how about it so i want to point out that i use um the the wiki to just like remind myself of what happens in an episode especially if we watch a bunch back to back mm -hmm. uh and the synopsis on the wiki is that kagura has gotten fat because of her degenerate <laughs> lifestyle <laughs> yes <laughs> she has <laughs> Uh, yeah, but so the episode starts with Kagura, she's, like, huge, and, uh, she thinks she's sick, but she's actually just fat. Gintoki, he tries to take her to the hospital and can't carry her there, because she's so big, and she has this, like, uh, sad moment where she's like, uh, I can't, I can't eat, like, crazy anymore. I, I, I want to um, run with starts, the kids, but I can't. To, yeah. She starts trying to get weight loss advice from people. Um, and it turns out that they're like also all fat now. Everyone she goes to. Mm -hmm. um, like she goes to uh, Otai and she tries to get her to do the, the Bagan Dash diet. Which, <laughs> what is she, she says if you eat enough ice cream, it forms a membrane around your stomach or something. <laughs> Yes, and then I think she has like an inner monologue saying, "This is when I learned that a lot of people who are dieting are lying to you. A lot of diet plans are yeah. lies." And then uh, Sachan, I think, falls through the roof as well, and she's yeah. also overweight now. She was uh, so declaring to... that uh, she's going to take Kentucky for herself, and then comically, fat falls <laughs> down below. Yes. Um, so they go to this place called the Diet Dojo. Um. Or it has like this intense regimen to lose weight or whatever. Yeah, fasting um, like the, the Buddha. Yeah, Atose, Catherine, and uh, Kube are there as well. Uh, also, all fat. They have like the same body. All of them have like the exact same body in this. <laughs> they do, which is actually really funny <laughs> that they're all exactly the same big. Um. <laughs> so they uh they go through and they find out that all they're allowed to do is uh have one potato chip for like seven days and if they eat the potato chip they get thrown out um and they all pick different flavors of potato chip yeah there's a huge argument over the potato chip flavors. yes <laughs> not argument and but more then, like just the uh, loudly declaring what kind of chip they would like um the only ones left are of course our our ladies Six. here yeah yeah uh and they are it it quickly devolves into like another death note-esque battle <laughs> where uh kagura is like wait i thought you know because they're like oh you know we, well, we've gone through all this suffering together so we must be friends wait what if all of that was just a ploy so that i'd let my potato chip unguarded <laughs> um and that of course was actually what it was and they have a giant battle in an attempt to get the potato chips from one another 
it's revealed that Cube is not actually fat. She's just wearing uh, weighted, weighted armor. Weighted armor. <laughs> That makes her look fat, and then they're like, "Why did you go to a fucking diet place?" Then, <laughs> and she just went to be near uh, Otai. And then um, Sachan is also wearing weighted clothing, and it's her fucking glasses. <laughs> and they do the Dragon Ball thing where they fall and leave like a crater in the ground when they hit the ground. Yeah, which was really funny to me when she uh, did. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, because she lost her glasses, she can't see anymore, so she starts throwing Natsu everywhere and sticks everyone to the ground. Um, and then they have this moment where all six of them reveal in an internal monologue that they laced their chip with a laxative. So they're all laughing at the same time as they eat one another's chips. And then the final shot is them all like walking together, drained, and with their, their regular weights again. <laughs> Yes, and that was this episode. So, this is a very simple episode, but it's a very enjoyable one. A lot of it comes from when they start actually doing the battle, which apparently is a reference to the Hunter x Hunter badge event, which I remember when they're trying to steal the badges, which is why at one point uh, Ty says, go read Hunter x Hunter Volume 3 before you try to take us all at old bags. <laughs> I, yeah, I, like, one of my favorite lines was when um, Otai was like, or not Otai, uh, fuck. Why am I blanking on the old woman's name? Uh, because there's a lot of women's names in here right now. Uh, uh, the, um, main, the main one. Otose? The main, Otose. Mm -hmm. um, when Otose is running and she's like, uh, this is why we've aged. <laughs> 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 fucking killed me. Yeah, that was really good. Um... There's a really good. There's a really lot of funny things with Tay in here. I like that beginning bit where she's trying to explain her fucking uh, diet plan, which is just literally eating a bunch of ice cream. Uh, that was pretty good. I like it when they're going into the temple and um, they're all saying like, you know, I, I, for, she starts fighting with uh, Sachan and she starts saying like. Oh, you think I'm actually fat like the rest of you? I'm not. I want you to know in the stomach is Ginsan's child. And then without hesitation, she fucking roundhouse kicks her in the yeah, stomach. kicks her right in the gut. <laughs> and she vomits out uh, Nato. She goes like, oh, congratulations on your slimy baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Uh, and then that kick gets followed up in the next one where I think Catherine gets kicked in the stomach. I think this is when they start asking about like... Because uh, when they see Catherine and it's all fat, they go like, are you constipated? Um, yeah, and then it turns out Catherine actually was. She was. When she gets kicked, she immediately shits herself. <laughs> Fucking shits herself, yeah. Another good bit with that was when they um, when they go up to Cube, they ask, was like, are you also constipated? And she just immediately goes like, oh no, I go every morning. <laughs> Don't worry about me, I'm fine. <laughs> I thought it was a very for a very uh, good answer to that. Um, I like the beginning because none of the characters want to bring up that um, Kagura is fat. They're just like, oh my god, something's wrong with you. And they go like, I feel like there's something wrong with you, but I actually don't know. But they're treating it like she's like deeply ill. Even when Gintoki picks her up and <laughs> tries to carry her and no one wants to bring up. She's like, uh, <laughs> she's trying to walk. It, it almost feels like a scene that came out of The Whale. The most recent movie where Brendan Fraser is a giant fat man where she's having a lot of troubles walking around. And when uh, again, uh, when she's... Uh, when she needs help, Gintoki tries to go help her, and he says, like, you need to put down the rice ball. And she goes, like, no, I feel incomplete without this rice ball. <laughs> Refuses to put it down. Um, I like <laughs> that bit. Obviously, the way to close, as a big Dragon Ball fan, uh, anytime a character reveals that they were wearing weighted clothes, it automatically makes me laugh. <laughs> It's maybe one of my favorite reveals of a character, both in terms of it as a joke and then also as a character actually revealing I was wearing weighted clothes the entire time. I'm, I'm all into that shit. And yeah, when they the reveal is they all slowly reveal themselves as like, oh, my chip has something else except for Catherine, who just keeps saying seaweed, seaweed, <laughs> seaweed inside her head over and over again. Um powerful laxative and then the the closing shot of them leaving where they're all extremely like dead inside because of how bad 
they had to use the bathroom is the perfect showcase of uh, Gintama and what I come to expect from the show. Six characters desperately fighting each other to eventually shit themselves is peak. <laughs> peak Gintama comedy. That really is like the, the core of what makes Gintama Gintama. Yeah, this characters was characters a... needing to shit themselves badly. Yes, and this was definitely the, a long way of doing it. And I'm I'm glad that we have a female counterpart to the male version of shitting themselves. I think it's only fair. Gender equality is that I'm all here for it. <laughs> So yeah, it was a very enjoyable episode. Uh, how you feel about it? It was good. I thought it was funny. It was. It was. The, there was obviously it was a haha fat person episode, but like the joke wasn't holy shit you are fat you fucking oh <laughs> yeah like, like as, it normally is yeah yeah like it usually is so that was that was pretty good. Um, <laughs> I really liked uh, all of the like the crazy fucking um, Death Note like war they're in where they fucking like fight it out um i it, it killed me when um side or not side uh sachan i don't like you calling her sai uh when she does that thing where she's like uh i as a ninja i can't let my uh agility be disproven and she turns around and instead of holding the chips she's just got a banana peel <laughs> And that's then right. uh, Kibe's like, hey, get that back. That's my banana. <laughs> that's my banana. <laughs> Fucking yeah. not hilarious to me. Yeah, also the reveal that uh, she had actually been eating the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Was not actually following the yeah, regimen at all. Yeah, because it's an eaten banana. Yeah, half-eaten banana. Um, yeah, that was good. I also like when they start spitting on the nun lady. Well, not to, they don't directly spit on her, but she said, the nun lady says, like, in order to get rid of your fat self and, and love yourself or something, you have to say, like, an expletive and then spit on this mirror. And all the characters are doing, like, uh, different things. I think not a single one of them actually does what she what they ask her to do. I think uh, Tay actively spits in her, the old lady's face and calls her a, a whatever curse word is being censored. Uh, Sachan immediately starts beating her up in a sadistic way, um, and Kagura spits so hard she knocks her out and she has to wear a band-aid on her forehead from that point on, so I thought that was funny, but yeah, very, uh, it's, it's weird because this is a fat episode, but it's also an episode where characters are, it's more of like just making fun of diets more than anything else. The joke here is not- Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was funny because it was like- I don't know why, but the the joke of it being like, oh, look at this, another stupid gimmick diet where they're taking advantage of people. And then the actual solution was just shitting themselves. (laughs) Yeah, that feels much better than the last time there was a fat focus joke where the joke was, Kentucky's just going to make fun of this fat person for a cup for like a good... Yeah, that's the last fat person episode. That was every line of dialogue out of his mouth. And yeah. some of them were still funny. Yes, they were. That's the thing yeah. that kills me. Is that some of them were funny. We're not saying it wasn't funny, but I was glad that it wasn't the main fun. One this of was... the best laughs I ever got out of Gintama was when he's dangling from that rope and she's grabbing onto his waist and he's like, I'm gonna fucking die. you <laughs> rip me in half. Yes, again, as we've said in that episode as well, there's a time and a place for it where it's funny, but I was a little bit uh, hesitant going into it because I was like, oh, it's going to be an all fad. I'm going to hear nothing but Kentucky going, what up, porkies, like for the next 20 minutes, but it thankfully wasn't that, and it was just actually enjoyable. So there we go. Let's move on to the next episode, which is episode 92, Be a Person Who Can See People's Strong Points and Not Their Weak Points. Uh, <laughs> this this episode title barely has anything to do with this episode. <laughs> Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what this episode's about. It's good luck on this one. Yeah, I don't even. Okay, where do you so, begin? <laughs> where I have do you start? No, they, yeah, I have no fucking idea. Um, so there's this like guy, like a like a sniper dude, and he's uh oh my god. So he's gonna assassinate. Turtle the sniper. Uh, yeah, he's Turtle the Sniper. He's going to assassinate Matsudaira, the old man. Um, and he's in the park. And he's looking through. He's got, like, he's got like a sniper rifle. He's like a, he's going to snipe him. 
Hmm. And he's looking through, and he sees um, Gintoki. And he's like, oh my god, this dude fucking knows. He knows, because he's looking right at me. My, my plan got leaked. He's going to try to... He's gonna try to kill me and save the guy, um, and so he has like this huge internal monologue about like I don't know how they found me. I don't know what to do, um, and it turns out this entire time Gintoki has just been watching a woman get undressed through her window. <laughs> yes. Um, and the guy thinks that Gintoki's staring at him, and he's having like this serious crisis where he's like uh, trying to figure all this shit out, and uh, he's got like a pet turtle. That's in the background, and his pet turtle is like, uh, "Oh, he sensed my like uh, my uh, stressed emotions or whatever," because <laughs> he's not making noise in the water anymore. Every time something happens, yeah. Um, Gintoki he like smirks when the woman uh, starts getting more undressed, and he's like, "Oh my god, he's <laughs> smiling right now. This man has the eyes of a beast, hungry for blood." Um, and then he accidentally shoots. Um, and Gintoki gets up and he looks down and he's like oh my god he tanked that bullet and all he's got is a nosebleed but obviously his nose is just bleeding because he was spying on that woman mm. and he's like freaking out like sweating all over and shit yeah. um, Gintoki Another... eventually gets confronted by the cops for uh, for peeking on this woman <laughs> um, and the guy's like oh my god he brought reinforcements to get me and then um, Hasegawa is at his door trying to sell him newspapers. And he's, like, breaking down, like, I'm surrounded. I don't know <laughs> what to do. Um, and then there's a woman up above him who's, like, about to fall off the roof and die. Um, yeah, and a crowd Kintoki is gathered is around him. yelling instructions to her. And the guy keeps thinking that Gintoki's talking to him. So he's like, don't do anything stupid. Stay right there. I'm, gonna, I'm coming for you in just a minute. And he thinks he's talking to him. And so uh, he go, looks over and he sees his turtles crying. And then he realizes that the turtle is giving birth and it's actually a girl turtle and not a boy turtle. Like he thought, um, yeah. Yeah, he thought it was a boy turtle. And so he like runs and jumps out of his window to escape because he sees this crowd of people that's looking at the girl who's falling. Um, and he jumps and the girl falls and lands on him. And that ends up saving her life because he like cushions her fall. And so Matsudaira gives him... A certificate of like you're you're a good guy you did a great thing and it's he, he's just standing there and he's got the turtle and all the baby turtles on his shoulder <laughs> and it ends with him just going all right whatever <laughs> and <that's it. laughs> yes and now explain that's the main plot here now explain the beginning and the ending of the episode <laughs> so the beginning um was them doing the famous meme speech about like um a different one actually because this one's different from the other one i've seen well I it's not the, it's not the full one but i have seen this one posted before yeah okay. um where they're like you know the inevitable the inevitability of it is that when you have a series that's like in syndication for a long time and it gets an anime at the same time uh the, the anime eventually catches up to the manga and there's no more content to make so you have to you know you have to do some other shit and they talk about like different ways that they fill airtime so they're like yeah you know you can have a bunch of flashbacks or you can replay clips from the previous episodes and basically everything they say they're just making fun of dragon ball <laughs> like in all of them <laughs> dragon ball and fist of the north star are the two big ones where they said yeah. there, there was a famously once an episode that was 30 minutes and not a single punch was thrown <laughs> yeah, and they're like and you can have an old man show up and then he can start having flashbacks <laughs> Um, and then after the episode ends, they're like, all right, that this week's Gintama episode is over. And Shinpachi's like, no, it's not. There's still so much time left. And Gintoki's like, ah, shit, you're right. Okay, let's start reading audience comments. <laughs> uh, and so then eventually they're like, all right, these audience comments are stupid. Let's just play uh, the whatever the idol girl's name yeah, is. Let's just play her song. New song. Yeah. And they're like, all right, perfect. And they just play the song. Yeah, they played the song after they already played the regular ED. Yeah, they did. <laughs> and then there's still more because the episode ends, and then they go like, "Oh, I thought you know, I thought that episode was pretty good. We're still on air, <laughs> guys. Please." Oh. <laughs> and then it ends with as classic uh, Gintama apology for this episode. Next one will be serious. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> 
All right. That's this episode. Okay. So let me see. Obviously, I'm going to try and tackle it in two parts. I'll start with the turtle guy because turtle guy ended up being really funny to me. Um, I like the constant going back to his turtle where he's like interpreting everything the turtle does as like something crazy about him doing what he's doing. Yeah, like, like when he's, he's sensing his thoughts and feelings and shit. Yeah, he's like, after he fires a shot, I can feel my turtle. It's doing a celebratory splash because usually it knows the sound of the gunshot means a, a job well done. <laughs> And he's just, like, in the background of the tank, just going boop, 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 up and down. There's, like, no real sense to any of that, what he's saying. I think it's really funny when he has Gintoki in sights, and he's just, like, so focused on thinking that this is, like, the ultimate, ba- he's the ultimate badass ready to stop him. And Gintoki's just doing what you would expect from him. He's just, like, watching a woman on dress, which is really funny because he mentions that it would be impossible for him to see me from this far away. And the woman he's watching is basically the same distance. <laughs> so if he was actually paying attention, he probably would have seen that there was a sniper there. But he, he was distracted by something completely different. Um, I Yeah, I like that part. I liked when the lady was going to kill her. Well, not when she was, like, threatening to say she was going to jump. And he thought that they were all there for him. In general, like, him him saying, like, oh, yeah, I'm a big coward. He's, like, going on such a, to such crazy length saying, like, I'm a coward. I'm too afraid to pull the trigger. My hand won't stop shaking. And there's just, like, so much silly, dumb stuff happening that's, like, he's taking 100% serious. Um, when he sees this turtle give birth, which is also really... Uh, gr- slightly graphic because they actually show the egg coming out of the turtle which I did not expect to see <laughs> I was like oh okay I guess you can show turtle birth in anime <laughs> and that's perfectly fine um, he says he wants to continue living and he wants to continue living for the child of these turtles and that's why he makes the jump to try and s- <laughs> escape and then I liked it at the end when he's there with the turtles just kind of chilling it was a very much a, like, oh, man, yeah, some stuff really happened to me there, but I'm just going <laughs> to roll with it and say, okay, whatever, who cares? <laughs> I'm here with my turtle, I'm happy. And, yeah, all the stuff in the beginning and the end where they're just basically padding for time is really funny. When they show the little stick character and saying, like, oh, yeah, manga a manga series becomes... Uh, a 20-page weekly manga is different from a 20-minute show. You're obviously going to have catch-up and stuff like that. Um, when they're making fun of Dragon Ball, because Dragon Ball was... if I don't know how many people remember watching or were able to watch old Dragon Ball, um, because Kai exists now, so I don't think people experience it the way we did back in the days then, where... Where it was five straight hours of Goku and Frieza fighting and doing yeah, almost where it's nothing. Like, doo, doo, doo. like the song would play and then like <laughs> <laughs> a lot of characters would be standing around and they would just kind of be kind of mentioning and then Piccolo goes rah, rah, rah. and then we cut back and <laughs> nothing has really changed and the music just kind of swells up and then the narrator kicks in and it's about ten minutes in when the episode legitimately starts. I don't think they get that experience anymore, Zen, which is a damn shame, because it's a hell of a way to watch over 1,000 yeah, episodes. One of, one of the funniest like things to go back and look at, um, I think funny fun fact is that Goku and uh, Frieza are not the longest fight in anime history anymore. They were for a while. Really? They're not anymore. I think it's some Naruto thing or something. I don't remember who. Oh. Um, <laughs> a Sasuke versus that uh, raptor. That's the longest <laughs> fight in anime history. <laughs> Peak fiction. Um, <laughs> Over a hundred episodes. <laughs> in Namek, one of the funniest things ever is when Goku and Frieza would be fighting, there are so many scenes of them just staring at each other back and forth with, like, dramatic music in the background. Mm-hmm. Just like, dun, dun, and then it'll, like, turn to Frieza. And then it's like a lightning strike will happen, and it's like, dun, dun, and they're just, like, standing there for, like, four minutes. And then the best part, music change. Oh, this is bad. Back on King Kai's planet. Let's yeah, talk about it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and then while they're on King Kai's planet, they will like transparently interlay Goku and Frieza <laughs> staring at each other over him talking. <laughs> Fuck, we need to go back to Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I think mean, this is actually what we're learning here is that we need to go back. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really something amazing when you look at it out of context. So many scenes are just like... Doo-doo. Like dramatic music pauses followed by, which is funny because they do it here too. 
Because there's a part that's like, I figured out a way for that's specific to us where we can uh, waste five minutes. And they do the exact same thing of like showing characters' eyes while dramatic music plays. Because, <laughs> like, okay, five minutes are up. Uh, yeah, it's. Oh, that stuff is so magical. Obviously, you can't do that now, especially after we've seen like more modern. Nowadays, with anime, they plan it out a bit better like obviously chainsaw man the anime is never going to catch up to the manga at this point like there's well, just most most anime these days is seasonal now they're not uh always they on. don't just run forever no not typically i think the only ones that are still like that are one piece isn't it no even one piece is kind of seasonal even with it's a thousand episodes <laughs> I think it might still be the case. But yeah, it's definitely not something you see very often. And off, and a lot of, there's just like not, it's not the same is what I'm saying. It's technically better, obviously, because uh, most of the filler content was pretty bad. But there is something special to the filler content that I end up really liking. And plus, sometimes you get banger episodes, like when uh, the Burger King exclusive VHS where Piccolo and Goku go learn to drive for a bit. <laughs> That's always good stuff. Uh, but yeah, them talking about that was really funny. Also, the, for a brief moment, you can actually see the OP of Dragon Ball playing in the background. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which I was yeah, like, yeah, there's uh, one where he's like looking at a TV, and it's literally just Goku on the TV. Yeah, and they're showing the clock, and they're showing how much time has passed. <laughs> um, when he's sh- when they show the uh, Gintoki watching the um the Dragon Ball episode, I actually thought it looked a little bit like the stinger like remember the stinger where it's like goku facing forward and then gohan like runs up to him Uh i thought it kind of looked like that from the back i don't know if it was on purpose but it definitely reminded me of that (laughs) so i'll just take it as an actual reference um and yeah the ending bit here i don't know why every time they do this a lot but every time they ever throw back to otsu's like idol songs it's really funny to me because it seems like whenever they want to kill time they'll throw up one of her songs <laughs> they've do they've done this at least like what five times at this point <laughs> where they're just yeah, like and every time they do they all sound exactly the same so like... yeah the the only one the only times i know if it's a different song is if she's swearing in it <laughs> otherwise they sound very similar um but yeah, I also liked when he was the reading the fan mail, and at one point they start talking about like a character said in this episode, "This happens in war" or something like that. Do you think they were on the verge of crying? And Gintoki gives a very sincere like, uh, "Yes, I do believe he was actually on the verge of crying. He had a very uh, rough time to go through, and if you pay attention to like the character, you can really feel the just like what the war has affected on him." And then he goes like, "Also." Uh, this is for D. Gray Man. <laughs> this is not for us. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, this was delivered for D. Gray Man. It got delivered not by mistake. Yeah, but you still <laughs> they still felt the need to answer it very genuinely. <laughs> also, the beginning when when Gintoki's like, uh, I was really hoping that you know we'd get back into the prime time slot, and Shinpachi's like, Why would you think that? <laughs> <laughs> we barely didn't get canceled. Why would we be in the prime time slot? Yes, we just barely was like, oh man, I was really hoping for it. Also, them making fun of the fact of like, oh yeah, we were supposed to be cancelled, and we were going to end it at episode 100, but now they gave us another season, so now we have to extend this shit even more and drag it on. (laughs) Like, we were planning to end it on episode 100, now we can't do that anymore. The Anaplex DVDs are getting wild, and it's like a a DVD of him holding up, um, (laughs) uh... Uh, shit. Who is on the cover for this one? It is one of the Shinsengumi, not Okita, and not Kondo. It's, it... um, Toshiro. Yes. He's, like, holding him, and he's, like, holding him by his eyes. Like, Anaplex is just going crazy with these <laughs> DVD covers. Yeah, with these, what, what does he call it? Unscrupulous. He uses a particularly funny word. Unscrupulous cover design. Unscrupulous, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> And then Kagura complains about, like, we don't even make that much money off of them, <laughs> to be real with you. Yeah, he's like, yeah, no matter how many DVDs sell, we don't get any of the money. Yeah. And then they, it really does feel like the first five minutes is them just, like, really actually going, like, all right, let's talk about the production troubles of this fucking show for a bit. 
Because they talk about, like, oh, yeah, we were supposed to get a new director, we were promised more budget, but then the budget never shows up, <laughs> so we don't have any more. Which is really funny, because they keep cutting to this animation of Kagura eating an orange hole. <laughs> yeah, which like is, three times. Yeah, they reuse that animation so much. It's, oh, man. I really like when they do episodes like this, where it's, like, them just kind of, like... First of all, not only making fun of their production issues, also having the fact that they keep reusing animation to tell <laughs> this specific aspect of it, I think it's always really funny. So it's nice to see. There's even, like, some of the screenshots don't look the best. Like, some of the ones with Shinpachi look like he's just, like, weird. <laughs> like, it's low quality. I don't know if it's on purpose, but it is funny regardless uh, of that. So, uh, this was a good-ass episode. <laughs> I enjoyed it myself. Was good. It was really good, yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything more to say about it? Not really. Um, I thought the I thought the ending was actually really funny when the turtle guy is just like, fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever, man. Sure. Yes. I've given up giving here. I also like that one of the little turtles is falling off and the other one is trying yeah, to help it. He's on his shoulder. Yeah. And then the, the, the mother turtle is just kind of vibing on the other <laughs> And, I don't know, it's very cute, just visual. Everyone's happy. It was a happy ending. <laughs> so just it leave was, it on yeah, that. It was, a, it was a positive episode. Mm-hmm. And that is it for Gintama for now. Next week, we will hopefully do the other three, which are ninety three episode 93, episode 94, and episode 95. I don't have a crazy fucking work schedule, so it should be possible for us. So look forward to that. Um... All right, then. As always, as we're ending the show now, I should say that if you want more stuff featuring us, the best way to find that stuff is to go to Zen's channel, where he does Shonen and Chill, where he talks about manga from the Shonen Jump app. He recently told me to go check out. We had, like, a manga exchange, technically. I told him to we go. Did. We did. We traded. Yeah, we traded. I told him to read uh, Destroy All Humankind. Uh, it Can't Be Regenerated. He told me to read uh, Sakamoto Days. And uh, we both really fucking enjoyed it, so <laughs> go read both of those. Zen knows what he's talking about with this shit. It was awesome. <laughs> I can't wait for that to get an actual anime at some point. <laughs> Which I never would have thought, um, looking at the cover of it, but yeah, great, great manga there. Uh, for more stuff featuring me, you can always go to my channel, where I uh, do various stuff. I, I really fuck up on uh, Marvel Snap RNG. If you want to see some of the worst possible RNG in the video game known as Marvel Snap, you can watch those videos of me. I'll make entire decks based off of a location that was supposed to have a 60 fucking percent chance of showing up, and then it won't only show up one time in a 20 minute video. <laughs> So, oh, that's brutal. Yeah, real. that was a real fun video. <laughs> I had a lot of good time. Uh, and yes, we will see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. YouTube's also kind of borked up right now, so if you just gotta slap a like right now, that'd be very helpful. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck throw happened. Them down. Throw them down. Yeah, throw them down. I, you, we usually don't ask for them, but right now I'm begging for it, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on with YouTube, so if you can help out, that'd be really nice. <laughs> Like, some, someone flipped it on, I don't know, Elon, they asked Elon for some advice, and now YouTube's all fucked up. I don't know what happened, man. I, everything was working fine one day, and then it wasn't. But that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. Until next time, we will see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>